In the midst of World War II, in the hands of the Austrian Hydra falls Obelisk, capable of creating a super soldier. The power is in the hands of the Austrians for a short time breaking into a secret base. Saboteurs take the artifact to hide it in a safe place and prevent Hydra from taking over the world. Decades later, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents discover a criminal, Carl Creel, capable of transforming into any material he touches. After investigating, the agents find out that the guy's abilities were given to him by the obelisk, and the team goes in search of him. The mutant also ends up in the warehouse, and when Agent Hartley tries to protect the artifact, her hand is covered in something that looks like ash. The colleagues manage to save the girl, but after relaying the information to their boss, Coulson, the agents are ordered to proceed as planned and to the end. After loading the injured Hartley into a car, the agents leave, and on the way the girl asks her partner to remove her affected arm so that the infection doesn't spread throughout her body. Hunter prepares for surgery, but at that moment the car flips, crashing into a mutant that has taken on the texture of asphalt. After protecting his arm with rubber, Creel takes the obelisk and flees the scene. All this time Hunter lies motionless, looking at his dead friends. Melinda comes to the guy's aid, but she has to go in search of the mutant, and Hunter has to surrender to the military. With Coulson's help, Melinda catches up with Creel's pickup truck, but the commander orders the girl not to open fire and to keep an eye on the mutant to find out who he is working for. Daisy reports to Coulson about the found artifact, but the boss shows no interest in the obelisk. More worried about Hunter, whose arrest could lead to the failure of the operation. At this point, the prisoner is thrown out of the trunk of a car into a field, where he is invited to board a military helicopter escorted by General Talbot. Talbot starts the conversation from afar, trying to understand Hunter, who left his military career to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. But a little later it becomes clear that the General is interested in something else. He offers the mercenary to turn in his boss, Coulson, promising in return a hefty reward and a proper funeral ceremony for Hartley. Daisy notices that his colleagues have not returned from the mission, and Coulson has to tell the girl that Hartley is dead. The agent asks for permission to detain Creel, but the boss orders the girl to stay in the office and not to interfere in a dangerous case. Fitz, an employee of the agency, is working on a cloaking device. In the company of Simmons, a vision girl who can't be seen by anyone but the strange guy, the imaginary friend supports the agent and suggests that he create a device that will allow him to disarm Crowell. For the sake of this, Fitz steals documents that contain an analysis of the mutant's DNA, hoping to use it for research. Creel stops by a cafe to grab a bite to eat and examine his obelisk-stricken arm. While serving the guy, the waitress accidentally touches it, and a second later, a scream erupts from the cafe. Running into the hall, Melinda sees the girl, who turns to ashes in front of the customers. Coulson orders Melinda to keep her head down and return to the office at the first opportunity. Coulson's men find Hunter and deliver him to his boss. Phil already knows about the guy's arrangement with General Talbot, but Hunter agrees to cancel the deal and disappear if they give him Creel. Back in his van, Creel takes the forms of different materials, but it doesn't work. The guy's arm remains damaged, and nothing can heal it. The mutant calls the customers he stole the artifact for, and they ask him not to worry about anything Hydra will take care of him as well as all his assistants. Hearing Creel's conversation, the beautiful Reyna appears in front of him and offers him carbide, the strongest material in the world. But Krill is not used to negotiating. He takes the stone from the girl and leaves. S.H.I.E.L.D. receives an anonymous message, and when Coulson calls back to the specified number, he hears Reyna's voice. The girl asks the agents to help her with the capture of Creel so that she and her followers can retrieve the obelisk. As help, Reyna reports a stone that the mutant stole along with a built-in transmitter. The agents prepare for the capture, and Fitz relays that his development is ready, and he will be able to disarm Creel. The girls inform the boss that the operation is starting, but at that moment, Hunter fires a couple of bullets at them and gets ahead of them. The traitor also gets rid of Triplet's sniper, while Creel starts negotiating with the customer, demanding to be helped. Hunter tries to get rid of the mutant, but Creel's abilities save him from a bullet. Panic breaks out on the street, but the Hydra customer doesn't have time to take the diplomat. He suddenly disappears. Creel turns out to be stronger than Hunter, and he is about to get rid of the annoying guy, but Coulson appears behind the mutant's back with Fitz's device. Falling to his knees, Creel turns to stone. After Hartley's funeral, Coulson suggests that Hunter finally go to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. 
He admits that he understands the guy's motive, but he'll still have to answer for shooting his co-workers. Reyna is contentedly examining the obelisk she managed to get her hands on. At her supervisor's orders, the girl takes the object in her hands, but it doesn't hit her instead. Glowing patterns appear on the artifact. At Coulson's request, Hunter turns him in to the general, and the men meet in a vacant lot and the agent hands Creel's body over to the military, asking in return not to interfere with the shield. To make sure Talbot has no desire to refuse, Coulson shows him his invisible airplane. Months later, Creel wakes up in a hospital bed after General Talbot followed Hunter's example and left the military to take over the world. The general admits to the mutant that he now has superpowers too and can help the guy curb the voices that have been plaguing him for years. After learning what Talbot is up to, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents try to catch the villain, but it turns out to be not so easy. The general extends his hand to Creel, but when the guy realizes that Talbot is absorbing him, it's too late the villain pulls the mutant into himself, turning him into liquid metal. After a long absence, Talbot returns home, surprising his family with a strange costume. The general shows his son tricks by lifting objects, and he offers to let the boy fly. But his wife asks the man to leave his son alone and informs him that the shield is looking for him. Upon hearing about the hated agency, the villain becomes enraged. This scares the boy, but despite this, the villain plans to get rid of his wife, who refuses to join him. Talbot is distracted by the sound of cars arriving and has to get out to stop the shield agents who are trying to foil his plans. The general tries to stop his son, and Rodriguez tries to take advantage of Talbot being distracted but a protective shield forms around the evil superhero and he manages to evade the agents. All the while, Coulson and Daisy are being held captive on Talbot's ship, but they manage to dispose of the guards and start the ship. But during the fight, Coulson is seriously wounded and loses consciousness. At the base, the commander is visited by Melinda May, with whom Coulson has struck up a relationship. The agents inform her that the boss is seriously ill and they are trying to create a serum for him, but they need more time and need the centipede serum. Upon hearing this, Simmons admits to her friends that they're at a dead end. There's only one dose of this serum left in the world, and only it can destroy Talbot. So they'll have to choose what to spend the last dose on. Back on the ship, Talbot turns to his prisoner, the girl who drew him. The general demands that the seer show him the place that was depicted in the drawing. An argument breaks out in the group over the serum, and Rodriguez prevents her friend from using the substance to save Coulson, believing that saving humanity from a villain is more important. To prevent tragedy, Mackenzie proposes a vote. But while everyone is distracted, Melinda destroys the second component of the serum for Talbot to save her boss. The general insists that the girl show the right spot on the globe, but the seer refuses to help the villain. To convince the captive, Talbot kidnaps her mother, and the girl has no other choice. Using the given coordinates, Talbot flies to the center of Chicago to find deposits of gravitonium and get a power that no one can match. After figuring out where Talbot flew to, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s plane emerges from the water and prepares to attack. The inhabitants scatter to the sides in panic as they see Talbot in front of them, raising a pillar of earth and drawing gravitonium from it. Police units arrive on the scene, but it is no longer possible to stop the general. At this point, messages from S.H.I.E.L.D. agents arrive on the phones of all residents who promise to help and liberate the city. Talbot raises the asphalt, planning to destroy the entire city. Daisy tries to stop the superhero by reminding him of the millions of lives, but the general is more concerned with his own greatness. The girl calls the hero to honor, reminding him of the army and his oath to protect people, and for a second it seems to her that Talbot came to his senses. Instead, the villain grabs the girl and takes to the sky with her to amplify the impact and end up deep underground. But as they fall, Daisy gathers all her strength and fights Talbot off, sending him into outer space, where he instantly freezes and loses his superpowers. Fitz gets seriously injured, and Mackenzie has to inform her friends that the guy didn't survive. But that's not the team's only loss. Coulson gathers his friends to inform them of his dismissal taking the team's promise to continue the agency and save the world when he's needed. After dropping their boss off on a tropical island, the agents fly away. But Coulson isn't alone. Melinda leaves her career to start a new life and make way for a young team.